Hello again, fellow train fans. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing this Southwest Portland Cement SDP 35. The last of its kind in the original car body. Just a worthy note for the prototype. At least, of course, in working order. Because there is one STP-35 in preservation. It's a seaboard airline. But, that aside, let's get this moving. If I can ever figure out how to open this massively weird box. This is odd. <laughs> I don't... What is this box? Okay, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I should have done. There we go. I can see the atlas. This is gonna be good. Ugh. Okay, I just figured I had to do that. All right, here we go. Here it is. Whoa, it's falling out. Okay. Didn't know there was something else in there. So, here it is. The Atlas Gold Series. STP-35. And the gold series usually means DCC and sound. Let's do this. Alright, there's the operation manual. I remember getting this with my uh, Norfolk Southern Dash 8 that I just operated. Oh my goodness, there it is. Ooh. This is looking pretty nice already. Where's the... Oh, it's in here. Um... Wow, there it is. Oh, man. This is... Wow, look at that. It's still got the original steam generator indicators. And there's even like a chains. There's like walk chains. No way! That is a cool detail. Wow, I've never had an engine that does that before. That is really, really, really cool. Oh man, this is this is really neat. This is a really neat locomotive. Oh man, this is wow. Look at that. You can see the uh, the massive like what do you call it? I don't know, but it's like a indent where the steam generator would be, I believe. This is the section where the steam generator would be. You got the indicators on the top where the steam generator would be. You got the little water glass right there. I believe that's what that is. It's an indicator of some sort, but I believe it was for the water glass. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's see, you got brake hoses on the front and back, both mu and air hoses. Oh, this is just sweet. This is one sweet locomotive. Oh, man. All right, let's get this thing on the track and see how it runs. Okay, I've got him on the track. Now it is time to program the address. Yes, the decoder is reading. So the active address is short, so I'm going to need to set up a new address under my club number. So, 6011. Yes, I would like to activate this address. There we go. Whoa. Ooh. Wow, that's a beautiful startup sound. Got a few similar features to that of the uh, Norfolk Southern Dash A here. It's got quite a few similar features to this thing in terms of uh, air hissing and all that. Very nice. Maybe I can run these two together in here. That'd be cool. I can run Dash A and SDP 35 together. Okay, let's check out some of these features. So we got a. Uh, can't we, oh, headlights are on, yes. Wow, you got both the uh, top and bottom sets of headlights. You could even have like the 
probably the Rio Grande style Mars I hear, but this was built to a Seaboard Airline standard, so I have no idea what kind of lights they had. But this tells me Rio Grande Gyro or Mars light there. Anyway, let's check out some other features. What about the horn? Ooh, that's a good horn. That's a good horn. I think this guy's gonna be leading the next SJVR contest. This is just beautiful. Let's check out the bell. Whoa, that's a different bell. It has the same bell startup sound as the NS8387 does. That's nice. I like how cleverly Atlas reused similar features here. Okay, so that's the bell. Okay, so butt number three, according to what I remember about the NS-8, should be something like a coupler or a brake release. Yep. There's the air release. That's it. So button number four should do something else. I, I don't know what it's called, but it should do something else. Yep, that same noise. It's very faint, but that might be a compressor. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I will take a look at this manual right here and see what it is. Here's the manual. Okay, let me turn that off. There we go. Alrighty, so, taking a look at the table of contents here, going to page 19 for function keys. Let's see. Number four is the cooling fans. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, so that's what it is on both the Dash 8 and the SGP35. Okay. So, button number three, like we just heard, is coupler crash, coupler fire, something like that. Yep, that's right. So, oh, button number seven does, oh, it just turns that thing off. This thing's been programmed, something else. Okay, so button number eight turns the sound back on. Button number nine says very heavy load. Okay, let's see. Button number nine says very heavy load on or off. On neutral, it says disconnect, standby, shutdown. Okay, so I'm gonna pull forward and test out button number nine. Ooh. I hear something from number nine. Ooh. I made it louder. Good. Whoa, it just went quiet. That's really cool, actually. Okay, so button number five should be dynamic brakes. Because I'm going to make that quiet again. I'm going to make it quiet. Pull it back here. There it goes. Don't hear much from the dynamic brakes. It's going a little quiet through the tunnel, so during regular operation, I think I will be probably have it a little louder once this thing is in operation. Three arms. sends chills through my bones. 
Wow, he just hid in the tunnel. Sounds really different compared to the SD40s. Back him up here. I'm gonna make it a little louder again with button number nine. We're gonna get quiet again. That's really cool how, I, how that's a possible option. That's really neat. Okay. Oh, he's still moves with button number nine. That's interesting. All right, I'm stopping him. Okay, that's that's really interesting feature. I like that. That could be useful for uh, industry switching on the Gihams layout. All right, let's pull him back forward here. So that's the DCC features of this unit. Now let's see what this guy can do pulling some cars up the grade here. All right, guys, I think that just about sums up today's unboxing video. This might be my last unboxing for a while because I've been picking up a lot of stuff, including this thing for projects. And, uh, yeah, I think this, I, I kind of want to conserve money, especially after I got scammed a little while ago, which was not good for me. So I need to start working a bit and uh, save up a bit of cash before I do my next unboxing so this probably will be my last unboxing. It depends on if I want to return to the Walther sale before the 30th or not. I, I really, I, I don't know at this point. I don't know. So anyway, uh, if you guys enjoyed this unboxing, if you made it this far, like please like and subscribe and share this video with anyone who might be familiar with this SWPC thing. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it for today. Take care, everybody.